I'm ready. That's such a great smile. I'm ready. I'm <laughs> okay. Ready. I'm fine. I'm going to be ready in a second. There. Now I'm ready. Sponsor me. Yeah, you got to do right. that. Sponsor me, yeah. Red Bull. Sponsor me, Red Bull. All right. Here's our intro. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hey guys, it's uh, Pete DeYoung and Caitlin Brayshow here with Remax for another uh, Calgary real estate market update. This is for March of 2024. And we're gonna talk a little bit about inventory versus uh, demand, supply versus demand. In other words, we're gonna talk about the effect of that on pricing and how that's affecting different segments and that kind of thing. We're gonna talk also about what areas of the city are outperforming other areas. And uh, who knows, we might just bash your dough a little bit too, but we'll see how that goes. We'll spill the tea on him. Spill. <laughs> Kate's got her tea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and actually, you know, before I even start, Kate, welcome back. Oh, thank nice you. Nice to have you working thank with you, with you. me again. Thank yes. you very much. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a it's been a wild ride the last couple months. Well, Kate's usually away, so it's nice, to, you know. I, I get a lot of negative feedback when she's not here because you have to look at my ugly face and as I do the market update. But now Kate's back, so uh, I, I think the level of uh, professionalism and all that stuff is uh, I thought I, you know, going to be a bit of an uptick now. Grace you with my presence. Yeah, well, thank you. Once in a while. Thank you. I have to. Thank you. Yes, yeah, I'm sure you've got another beach planned in the yeah. next little while. So I wish. All good. After looking at the weather outside. Oh, it's brutal. Things, yeah. You know. The never-ending winter. <laughs> Anyways, um, what else is never-ending is uh, price increases in Calgary, and that's because we're seeing sales go up about 10%. Mm -hmm. New listings come down about 4.5%. Mm -hmm. And that's leaving us with a bit of an inventory problem, isn't it? Yeah, we're, we're down 22% compared to last year for inventory, which brings down our months of su supply to not even a month's worth. We supply. got less than a month's worth of supply. Yeah, that's down. 30%. And remember last year, we were complaining last year about how little inventory we had. And so. here we are, still complaining. Yeah, still <laughs> well, it, you know what? I mean, this is a housing crisis, especially for yeah. buyers and even within buyers, especially first-time buyers. I think about my four kids, and I don't know how they're ever going to afford a house. Uh, and I don't want them moving back with me if I can help it. Maybe one. Anyways. Oh, you got a favorite. Uh, yeah, well, Maybe. Uh, but you know, they're all my favorites. So anyways, Good um, answer. yes, yes. <laughs> uh, but you know, when, when we look at, uh, what's going on with respect to supply versus demand, it really is affecting different, uh, market segments exactly. more than others, isn't it? Yes, so it is. Let's look at the benchmark prices actually. Yeah. Yeah. Let's look at the benchmark prices for each of the segments. So let's start off with the detached. Uh, the detached is actually up 14%. So mm -hmm. detached are up 14%. And you know, the yeah. good thing about looking at a benchmark price as opposed to an average is the average isn't going up nearly as quickly as the benchmark is because mm -hmm. we're just selling more and more of the uh, of the lower cost inventory, yes. the lower yeah. cost supply, which keeps the average going up a little mm -hmm. bit slower than the benchmark price was. So mm -hmm. yeah, as Kate mentioned, detached are up 14 and a half or sorry, 14%. Uh, the semi-detached, which is not, not townhouses, but like a half duplex and these kind of yeah. places, there's not a lot of sales in those, uh, but there's even less inventory. Like we saw uh, in March, we saw a sales to listing ratio of the semi-detached market of about 96%, which is like, you know, if you've got a semi-detached and you listed it, you had a 96% chance of selling it. Mm -hmm. So it was uh, that market, especially, like I said, it's a small market, but that market performed really, really well. Mm -hmm. But then as you get into the cheaper stuff, yep. I hate using the word cheaper, but I, it really is. I mean, yeah, when you look less at, expensive. When you look at townhouses and apartments, mm -hmm. they, yeah. they're really the ones that have increased the most, oh, right? Well, townhouses the most, actually, it's increased up to 20% compared to what it was last year. Yeah. Yeah. So that's about 448,000, actually. Yeah, and, and apartments are up 17%. So yeah. what's interesting is, you know, once in a while you hear people saying, we're building, uh, you know, we're always being forced to build too many of these multi-resident, you know, like there's a huge market for these, especially at times like this when, you know, people are viewing interest rates are being high. I don't think they actually are high. I mean, if you look at them historically, these are pretty normal rates. But I guess when the expectation is that they're going to be coming down, um, you know, people don't want to spend money on the million dollar properties. And those ones are really still having a bit of an issue, right? Yeah, We're seeing anything, lower inventory in them, but exactly anything over the 700,000 mark is having that is having the issues of selling right now. Yeah. That's where we're at. It's almost like we have two markets 
in Pretty Calgary. Much. You know, yeah. like there's there's yeah. the market under six or seven hundred thousand, yeah. and then the market over that, and they're not the same. So, mm -hmm. uh, one market's acting entirely different than the other. One way to tell that is, of course, when you look at different areas of the city. Yeah, right? exactly. Let's so let's talk about the different areas of the city right now. So the area that's actually doing the best that's at uh, an increase of pretty much 25% of that benchmark price from what it was last year is the East. So we're talking Forest Lawn area. Um, what else is in that area? Dover. Dover. Yeah. 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 Pembroke. That, like yes. All that kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that, that stuff. And again, it's got to do with um, the value of those properties that, you know, yeah. they're, they're affordable. Mm -hmm. You know, so I should say that more affordable, not cheaper. Yeah. But the more affordable inventory is the stuff that's, uh, boy, I tell you, that's where the excitement is right now. Mm -hmm. Of course, the uh, if you look downtown, we're only up about five and a half percent. So compared to 25 percent. And this yeah. I always think this is interesting being in real estate for as long as I have. I've been in real estate longer. I'm probably real estate longer than even alive. No, almost. Yeah. I've been in real estate two thirds of your life. Over two thirds of your life, I've been selling real estate. So, I'll, yeah. let, I'll let people figure out how old Kate is at that because I know, I know she looks like she's eight, sixteen. I know she looks like she's eighteen. She's not. She's way older. No, way. Yeah, I am yeah. very much way older than. If that. you ask her mom, she's. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, sorry, where were we going? We, we, we were in the middle of saying something. Oh, you were talking about the city center. And you were talking about the prices there. Yeah. Yeah. But I have no idea where I was going. This you were talking a, about real estate and how, you know, it's funny that I've been in real estate for this long. Yes. Long. What I was saying was, um, <laughs> it, it's interesting to me that, you know, years ago, people were always saying, oh, well, whatever you do, don't ever buy in Forest Lawn or Dover or whatever. Mm. Like, even as an investment property, you know what? I always said the rents there are as high as anywhere else. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, people that did invest in places like, Forest Lawn and Dover have actually seen the the, the, the biggest base. equity gain mm -hmm. uh, of anywhere in the city. So mm -hmm. it's like it's actually st I, I believe it's still a good area to invest in, especially when you see what they've been doing in in Forest Lawn. Yeah. With respect to International Avenue and, yeah, and that kind of that. stuff. So yeah, kind of gentrifying the neighborhood a little bit. We'll see mm -hmm. where it goes. But uh, anyways, getting a little bit off topic. Um, just in terms <laughs> of some Trudeau bashing, I, I was watching the news again this morning, and he's throwing another hundreds of millions and billions at this problem. I think he's got, he's throwing everything at it, but the kitchen sink. I, I think, uh, you know, duck, if you see something in the next little while, cause it might be the kitchen sink. Uh, the reality is what we really need is, um, immigration reform, you know, especially yeah. in the next little while where we're, we're, you know, purposely bringing in people that can build houses right. and, and kind of limiting it a little bit to, to stuff like that. But and of course, you know, reducing the gatekeepers. I think, you know, I, I think I'm showing my cards here, but I think Polyev's on track in terms of, you know, reducing the amount of red tape and stuff like that. It's hard to build a home now in Calgary or in, in Alberta or in mm -hmm. Canada. There's just so many hoops you have to jump through and so many forms to fill out and that kind of stuff that it's, we've made it really, really hard to do. So anyways, until that happens, I don't see uh, the market changing too much in the next little while. Uh, what we are still seeing is a lot of people moving here from, uh, Ontario and Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think prices will continue to, to uh, escalate for a while. I did do a report this morning for uh, some other people where, uh, and it's a, it's a report that I normally send out every Thursday. I'm a day late this week, but uh, where I look at sales to listing ratios on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And I did note on there that we've seen, we actually are seeing higher inventory levels now in, uh, in detached houses and in townhouses than we've seen all year. So inventory okay. is very slowly starting to climb up a little bit. That's good to hear. It's hard to tell uh, this soon whether that's a, a blip or the beginning of a trend, but time will tell. If you want to know what's going on in your neighborhood, though, or your type of home, um, get a hold of Caitlin or me. We're happy to help you anytime, whether it's a bungalow in Beddington or a two-story in Tuscany or a condo in Canyon Meadows. Wow, that I added a new yeah, one. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, no matter where you're living or what kind of place you're living in, if you want to track your entire or track your market for your type of home, the best idea is, like I said, get a hold of us. Let us know what it is. Our email, um, our emails will be uh, on this video here somewhere. I'm sure Marley, when she edits this, will will put them probably right here. Here, here. 
here. No, no, I think here. Here? This like is the right best here? place, like right between there. us. Oh, yeah. We'll see what Marley does. But <laughs> you can email either one of us with, uh, like I said, the type of home you're living in, whether it's a bungalow or a two-story or a four-level split, where you are in the city and that kind of stuff. And then we'll set you up with a report that is just like narrowly defined to, to uh, what your place is. So you can really yes. start to watch it and see what's going on. And then the other thing I'd recommend is if you're considering moving even in six months or a year, but you want to start watching the market that you're going to be buying into, we can do the mm -hmm. same thing there as well. So um, Caitlin and I actually really like doing reports. We like charts and graphs and, and understanding what's going on in different market segments. So by all means, get in touch with us and we're, uh, we're happy to help you with that. Mm -hmm. That being said, uh, thanks for watching our little market update. Don't forget to like. We got we got a little like and then subscribe, share, comment. Four things. Yes. Yeah. Four things. Got to mention all the things. Okay. So yes. if you like and you subscribe and you share and you comment, um, lunch with me or Kate, your choice. Yeah. So on right. us. That's mm -hmm. all you got to do. Mm -hmm. Like one person will do. Like. Imagine we had like a thousand people did that. I don't know. Hey. Can you imagine we had a thousand people watch our video? But no, if, if you do that, you we're going to enter you into a draw to have lunch with Kate or me. So, yeah. and I know who it's going to be. You got to choose. Yeah. And it's like, no one's going to choose me, but it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Anyways, thanks again for watching. Uh, until next time, um, call us anytime. We're happy to help. Thanks Bye. so much. Hey, and uh, mm -hmm. Caitlin just reminded me, this is like an add-on to our little video. Yeah, yeah. A little add-on, Kate reminded me, we forgot to talk about the highest price sale and the lowest price sale that happened in Calgary so far this year. Yeah, so far this so year. So which one do you want to do? I'll do the lowest price sale. Okay, if yeah. you do that, then I'll do the then highest price. you'll do the highest Yeah, that price. makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we're such oh logical, God, such amazing. logical yeah. people. So smart. logic. You're so so logic. Yeah. SMR. Okay, go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the lowest price to sell was... I feel like we talk about this area often when we are talking about this segment. Mm -hmm. um, it's sold for under, you can still buy something for under 130000 here in Calgary. Crazy. If, if you can believe that. Um, it's sold in Chinatown. It was a 300 something square foot, you called it a walk-in closet. It's basically <laughs> a walk-in closet with a kitchen and a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> in Chinatown. Yeah, and it sold for 128000 128 k Can you imagine that? That's crazy. Like, and it kind of, it's, I, I was thinking it's kind of cool because it's about the same size as like, you know, your your average travel trailer. Yes. And it's about the same price too, that's, except oh, it's just not true. mobile. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. And then the most expensive one sold in Lakeview. It was a gorgeous home. Like it really was. It was beautiful. That one sold for $5.2 million. Oof. And what I thought was interesting about that one too was the realtor's name was uh, something. I can't remember her first name. Do you? Was it Veronica? Heisen? And then her, her last name though was interesting to me as a Dutch guy because her last name was <laughs> Houseman, which is literally translated Houseman. So, but a Houseman in Calgary is act or in Holland actually is like a farmer that owns his own farm or something like that. It's, oh. it's a particular designation, but, yeah. but it's interesting that there's a re like a realtor named Houseman. I thought it'd be, it'd be even better branding. if it was, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, houseman, the housewoman, you know. But anyways, we've promoted her name long enough now. <laughs> yeah, we have. Again, I'm Pete DeYoung. This is Caitlin Kate. Ratio. We're with Remax Professionals. Our numbers and emails and everything else will appear um, above or below our names or, or above and below our video. Video. Below, below probably. Below. Yeah. She'll put it below. Anyways, again, call us anytime. Happy to chat. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye.